Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Can you imagine what it would be like to actually walk with Jesus and talk with him? Well, we get a chance to do that, do that every day when we read scripture at home and through our daily prayers. In our gospel reading for today, it is the afternoon of that very first Easter. And some disciples, not part of the original 12, are walking, with, and all of a sudden Jesus appears to them on a road, and they have a chance to talk with Jesus and listen to him. Well, today as we gather for worship, we come to listen to Jesus as he speaks to us in his word, and we come to speak to him in our prayers. Our God is indeed a great God as we celebrate this wonderful news that Jesus has risen. Therefore, let us rise and sing together our opening song, Our God, How Great Is Our God. Oh, God. 
is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through Jesus' resurrection and our baptism, God has claimed us as his own. He has called us from the darkness into the light of his day and promises to be with us wherever we go. The disciples in Emmaus welcomed Jesus into their homes, but we have not always welcomed Jesus into our homes. Let us take a moment in silence to examine our lives and confess our sins before God. Let us confess our sins together. Merciful Father, we ask you to forgive us our many sins of thought, word, and deed. We humbly acknowledge that we are responsible for the sin that has served to divide and fracture relationships with others. We have not always walked the extra mile or turned the other cheek. We are truly sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, crucified and risen, we seek your forgiveness. Almighty God has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. By the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I, as a called and ordained servant of God, announce the grace of God to you. And in, the, in this place, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite our children to come forward at this time to gather here with us for our children's message. Hello, boys and girls. Do you know who this is? Did you say Miss Rebecca? That's right, it is Miss Rebecca, but I'm wearing a mask. How did you know it was me? Well, you see, maybe you recognize my voice or know I work here, and you're like, I bet that's Miss Rebecca. And so the disciples were walking at Emmaus, as Pastor just said, but they didn't recognize Jesus, but they did recognize his voice. And Jesus wasn't wearing a mask like this at all. He was just being himself. And he was trying to help the disciples see the big picture. And that makes me think of puzzles. And so I brought some puzzles today. This one is a grown-up, because look at how tiny that puzzle piece is. It takes a long time. But how can this one little piece make this picture? It's because lots of little pieces make it together. Just like in life, as we grow older, we learn more, and more things make sense to us, and we can understand them. Now, I have this puzzle piece with me. Now, who can tell me what is on this puzzle piece? Did you say it's green? That's right. Do you see an eyeball? I see one, but what is the eyeball connected to? Is it a person? Is it an animal? Is it a monster? I don't know. By looking at this one piece, I can't really see what this whole picture is about. But as we put a puzzle together, we can see that it makes a beautiful picture. And this puzzle is filled with animals that God has made that we get to enjoy here on earth. And so in life, as we learn more things at school and at home, we start to put the puzzle together. Now, will we ever complete the puzzle? No not the puzzle of life, until we go to heaven and be with Jesus. Because are adults still learning? Yes, they are too. And grandmas and grandpas, are they still learning? Yes, they are too. How many of you have had to teach them about technology since we've been quarantined? And so we're all still learning. And God wants us to remember we can learn more about him and grow in that knowledge by reading the Bible and coming to worship. And so now we're going to do prayer hands, boys and girls. 
Can you do prayer hands with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who shows me how to be kind to all my friends and provides me with knowledge so I can continue learning here at home and in my community. Amen. Great job, boys and girls. And now you can, I don't think I invited you down, so just stay where you are because Pastor Bill's going to come. Our first lesson for today comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter beginning with the 14th verse. If you have a Bible at home, this is the fifth book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 14, and then we're going to jump over to verse 36. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore, he said, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson for today comes from the book of 1 Peter. This is near the end of the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and your hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. We rise for the reading of the gospel. Now that same day, two men were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Clopas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. 
But we had hoped that he was to be the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was still going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took some bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But then he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They, there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus recognized, was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. What are you talking about when you are with strangers? Well, these days, I guarantee if you are with a group of people waiting to go into a store, or if you are standing in line waiting to check out at Lowe's Home Improvement or a grocery store, I guarantee there's only one thing you are talking about, the coronavirus, and how these are unusual days, sad days, challenging days, and when is this all going to end? I guarantee on the afternoon of that first Easter in our gospel lesson, when people were talking to each other and talking to strangers, they too were only talking about one thing. What happened to Jesus? And how these were sad days and challenging days. What surprised these two followers of Jesus in our gospel lesson is that when Jesus appeared to them on the road and did not reveal who he was, Jesus acted like he was completely oblivious to the things that had been happening to them in those days. In fact, Jesus appeared to be so clueless that one of these men who was traveling on that road named Clopas even asked Jesus, are you a visitor here to Jerusalem and you don't know all the things that have been happening? These followers of Jesus had all of the pieces they knew everything that had happened, but they just couldn't seem to put it all together. They knew that Jesus was a powerful prophet of God. And they believed that Jesus was going to redeem and restore Israel back to its power and prominence in the days of the Old Testament under King David. But they saw Jesus handed over to the authorities by the religious leaders. They saw him tried and and condemned, and, and he was then crucified. Now it had been three days since all of this had taken place, and reports were coming out that some women had seen a vision of angels who announced that Jesus was alive. They looked inside the, the tomb, and but they didn't see Jesus. And so some of the disciples who they knew, when they heard this information, they ran to the tomb to see if they could verify it. And they too noticed that the tomb was empty, but they did not see Jesus. And so as these followers of Jesus had all of this, these bits and pieces of everything that was happening, they just couldn't seem to make sense of it all. And their hearts were filled with sadness and confusion. Today, 
It seems like many people are getting their religion or their spirituality in bits and pieces. They get some from some books that they will read. They get others from television, or they get a lot from the internet. And the problem with all these different places, the, the, and these different sources, the problem with all of these different groups that may exist today, especially those outside of Christianity, is that when it comes to discussions of spirituality, Jesus is, at best, misunderstood. And at worst, he is not mentioned at all. And so as these followers of Jesus were traveling along the road, they, they had all the pieces, they had the information, but when they put it together, to them it just looked like one dark, gloomy picture. Their hopes were ruined. Their dreams were destroyed at the death of Jesus. But where was his body? And could it really be true? that angels appeared to women and Jesus really was alive? But wait a minute, people did not rise from the dead. This, this just this didn't make sense. But they had all the information, they had all the facts. They just couldn't see the big picture. Have you ever tried telling something to someone and they just didn't seem to get it? No matter how hard you tried, they just didn't seem to get it? Well, that was the case here that these disciples were experiencing with Jesus. And Jesus even makes reference to this, saying in verse 25, How foolish you are! How slow of heart you are to believe the things that the prophets had spoken to you! In other words, the prophets had told them that the Christ would suffer and he would die, but three days later he would rise from the dead. And these guys knew it but they just didn't get it. And sometimes we don't get it as well. Apart from God, we are spiritually blind. Our sin separates us from God, which means we do not have the ability on our own to believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And so this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Spirit comes to us in our baptism. The Spirit comes to us whenever the Word of God is read and taught and preached. And the Holy Spirit enables us to believe in Jesus and the power of his resurrection. It's kind of like these cables. We all know that if we want to connect some electronic devices together, TVs, DVRs, DVD players, our computers, smartphones, and so forth, we need to have some cables that will connect them so that one device can receive the input from the other device. Well, the Holy Spirit is like these cables. Without the Holy Spirit, we are not able to receive input from God. And the Bible even tells us this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says there that a person without the Holy Spirit cannot receive or believe in the things from the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. They do not make sense because they are spiritually discerned. And so Jesus opened up the box to those disciples, meaning he opened up the scriptures to them. And he took all of the pieces that existed there in scripture. And he began to put those pieces together for those disciples. He traveled that road with them, teaching them all about him. It was like they had a small Bible class along the way. And he puts these pieces together, going back to the early days of the Old Testament. He tells them about Moses. And then he tells them about what the prophets had to say about the Christ. And then he goes on to tell them everything that the scripture said about himself. And later on, when these disciples looked back on that experience, they said that their hearts burned with wonder and joy as Jesus explained to them what the scriptures meant. 
And so as Jesus opened their eyes and put all of these pieces together, all of a sudden, they recognized Jesus. They saw the big picture. They knew Jesus was alive as he sat down with them and broke bread and gave it to them to eat. But then he disappeared. And so these followers of Jesus ran to Jerusalem to tell the original 11 what they had experienced. That indeed Jesus was alive. They recognized him. Their hope in Jesus as their Savior had been restored and renewed by his presence with them. And so they had to go and tell the others. So, what about us? Two weeks ago, we celebrated the good news of Easter. How Jesus had risen from the dead and he had destroyed sin, death, and the power of the devil forever. So now what? What's our next move? If we're not going to do anything with this incredible news, other than say, Christ is risen, alleluia, on Easter, and then never do anything else with that news again until maybe next Easter, then we're just like those people on Palm Sunday who shouted Hosanna when Jesus came into Jerusalem, but by the end of the week shouted crucify him on Good Friday. Those people at Palm Sunday in Jesus' day believed that he was going to be their earthly king. And he would free them from the tyranny of the Roman government. But when that did not happen, they began to lose hope. Maybe some people you know who celebrated Easter a few weeks ago with great joy, maybe they're losing hope as this pandemic continues. There are certainly times in our lives when we don't know what to say when someone asks, what next? Right now, we don't really seem to know what the future holds. But the news of Easter is not just simply a reminder that someday, when we die, we will get to live with Jesus forever in his heavenly kingdom. The gifts that Jesus earned for us on Easter through his victory over sin and the grave our blessings and gifts he wants us to use now in some special ways. And here's what I mean. When I was in college, my aunt would periodically call me to find out what I had done with the money she sent me for my birthday or for a special holiday. She wanted to encourage me to spend or to use that money on some worthwhile things that were part of the overall big picture of graduating. She did not want me to waste the money she had sent to me. Well, Jesus does the same thing. He wants us to spend or to use the gifts that he gives to us towards the overall big picture of living the Christian life. He too does not want us to waste the things that he gives to us. And so on Easter, Jesus approached these two men on that road to Emmaus to encourage them, to teach them as they continued in their journey of faith. And as a result of his visit, their hearts were renewed with the hope that they once had. They continued to believe that Jesus was indeed their Savior, and they realized they needed now to go out and share this amazing news with everyone they knew that Jesus had risen, he was alive, exactly as Jesus and the prophets had told them would happen. They saw their place in the big picture of the Christian life, and they realized that their answer to the question of now what was for them to go out and tell others. Jesus is a stranger to many people in this world. But he is a stranger who wants to be a friend to all people. So we, as believers in Jesus Christ, are called to be different from the people of this world. Now, we might look like the people of this world, 
but through our words, actions, attitudes, and priorities, hopefully those things give us away as followers of Jesus. In fact, as we live a life filled with hope and joy, even in the midst of this pandemic, people might even look at us and ask, are you a visitor to this area? Are you not, do you not know what in the world is going on these days? But as followers of Jesus Christ, we can stand out. We should stand out from non-believers. Why? Because life with Jesus is a life that is filled with hope. And so as Jesus then went out for his next step, to share with others and to teach these men all about him, he did that so our next step would be to go out and to share this wonderful news and even teach others that Jesus is alive and indeed, that has changed everything. And so my prayer is that those who do not see the big picture of who Jesus is and what he has done for us, those who are still living in the darkness of despair, emptiness, and hopelessness, may more and more see Jesus in all of us, through our words and our actions. And they will want to know more about a life that is filled with hope and with joy, even in the midst of some unusual, sometimes sad, and challenging days. Amen. Let us pray this day. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you that you come to us wherever we are. You always meet us on the roads that we travel to love us, to support us, to nurture us, to strengthen us. During these challenging days, we pray that our faith may go stronger as you come near us. We pray that you would help us to see what to do next with this amazing news that indeed you are alive. We pray that people around us would be able to know through our words and actions that we are indeed your followers, and they too would want to know more about what this wonderful life of joy is all about, even in some challenging days. Be with us and use us always in our service to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us rise and sing together our next hymn, uh, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
Let us rise and confess our faith together by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we remember our church, our nation, and all of those who may be sick or suffering in any way. And we certainly pray that our God will continue to be with us and that he would remove this horrible virus from our society. Let us pray. O gracious God, we pray today that you would strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may be bold to confess you before all people. Encourage us that we may speak of you to those still lost in the darkness of their sin, and that our words and our actions may show forth your love for all people. Bless those who serve in this church, who serve you in lands far away and in places close to home that their work in your kingdom may always prosper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, today we hold up before you those who are sick and suffering, and we pray that you would in special ways bring healing and blessings to Kathy, Lanny, Maureen, Shirley, Rebecca, Tom, Arlene, Joe, Lucy, Brian, Judy, Peggy, Betty Jo, be with Mark, Connie, Lillian, Margaret, Mary, Richard, and Betty. Watch over Elizabeth. Be with Connie, Kathy, Barbara, Christana, Werner and Ursula, and Mary Jane. Continue to watch over Bob and Cindy. Be with David, Zoe, James, Deshauna, Roger, Judy, Dave, Paul, Warren, Sue, Sonny, Lois, Joanne, Pam, Tim, Mark, Bettina, and Bill. We pray that you would watch over Elvira, be with Glenda, Judy, Esther, Josiah, Penny, Spencer, David, Sandy, and Bill. Be with Peyton, Vinnie, Donnie, Wayne, Alan, Joseph, and Mary. Watch over Elihu, Charlotte, and Stephen. Be with Baron. Watch over Craig and his family. Watch over Brian, Steve, Donna, Patty, Barbara, Thomas, Martha, James, Danny, Stevie, Bertha, Ryan, Monica, Faith, and Grace. Be with Charlie and Joyce. Watch over Janie, Tom and Sue, Todd and Karen. Be with Natalie, Joyce, Serafina, Gretchen, Heidi, Evelyn, Matthew, Amy, Rosie, Matab, Patricia, Madeline, Lexi, and Ryan. Lord, you know the challenges that they face every day. And so we pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit and increase their faith in you and use us to minister to them in whatever way possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh Lord Jesus, we ask you to look with mercy on the unemployed, the homeless, the hungry, and lonely in our world, and especially those in our community. Lead us to look on them with sympathy and to give of ourselves for their care. You have hidden yourself in their distress so that what we do for them, we do for you. Show to those who are helpless how much we va you value them by providing them with all that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we know you were never too busy to pay attention to children for you dearly love them. We pray that you would bless all parents and guide them during these days as they teach their children at home. Help them to realize their parental responsibilities and the privilege of raising and teaching children for you. Help us all to love, respect, 
obey and treasure our parents and forgive us when we fail to recognize them as your precious gifts. Bless our homes and our families with a strong faith in you and a true love for one another during these challenging days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, in this time of stress and uncertainty, we thank you for our first responders and healthcare workers, men and women who unselfishly put themselves in danger to protect us and all our neighbors worldwide. Father, as they protect us, we ask you to protect them. You know where they will be today and what physical and spiritual challenges they will encounter. Grant them courage when they are afraid, godly wisdom when they must make quick decisions, strength when they are weary, and compassion in all their work. Many of our first responders and healthcare workers may not know you, and so we pray that you would provide men and women of faith to share the good news of Jesus with those who do not know him as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray that you would be with all of these doctors and researchers that they indeed would find a treatment for this horrible COVID-19 virus. Lord, may they all feel your presence today, draw them to you, and be with all of them and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have the opportunity to respond to God's many blessings through the gathering of our offerings. Once again, we thank all of you who continue to give your offerings to God here at Holy Cross by mailing them to the church, bringing them to the church, or giving online. Let us offer a prayer of thanks for these wonderful gifts that God gives to us. Let us rise. We pray. Giving Lord, we give thanks to you for all of your blessings, for the gifts of forgiveness and life, and for all we need to support life. Bless these gifts, we pray, as tokens of our gratitude for all of your blessings. May they glorify you today and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. We sing together our closing hymn.
peace and serve the Lord, sharing God's word and living his love. Amen.